that this individual had gone missing. Unfortunately, at that time, all investigative leads were exhausted without identifying this unfortunate woman. She was thought to be in her early 20s, and she was a homicide victim from a gunshot injury. Once we get to that point, unfortunately, these folks will be buried in a public burial location, and subsequent leads did come in over time for further investigation, but were unproductive until we received notification from our colleagues at the Akron Police Department uh, of a very promising development in this uh, investigation. And I will turn this over now to Deputy Chief Leeser from Akron Police Department to fill in that piece of the story. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Jesse Leeser. I'm the Deputy Chief of the Akron Police Department. Uh, before I begin, though, I'd like to uh, extend sympathies on behalf of the Akron Police Department the family of Linda Pagano, uh, specifically her brother Mike and sister Cheryl who are here today. Uh, they not only lost a sister but had to suffer for so long not knowing uh, what happened to her. I would like to recognize those that worked on the case uh, with the Akron Police Department, Sergeant uh, Jeff Smith and Sergeant John Ross. We also partnered with the University of Akron and Kent State University and they were very helpful. In September 1974, Linda was reported missing after an argument with her stepfather. Several months later, remains were found uh, by three young kids in the Cleveland Metro Parks area. Uh, at the time, the two incidents were not connected, and many years later, Sergeant Smith was assigned to the Juvenile Bureau and Missing Persons. In 2016, he began to work on cold cases for the Akron Police Department's Missing Persons Bureau. He entered data into our national database system for missing persons, and a link was developed at that time. Uh, we partnered with the Cog County Medical Examiner's Office, Dr. Thomas Gilson, his staff, and the Metro Parks Police Department to work on the case. Uh, the body was later exhumed. Uh, DNA was used from family members to confirm that the identity was Linda Pagano at that time. Um, uh, at that point, our case was closed and we then handed off to the Cleveland Metro Parks. And I would like to introduce Lieutenant Silvis from the Cleveland Metro Parks Police Department. Good morning. I'm Lieutenant Don Silvis. I'm, uh, I oversee the Detective Bureau for the Cleveland Metro Parks Rangers. On behalf of the Cleveland Metro Parks Ranger Department, I'd like to extend our condolences to the family and friends of Linda Pagano. On February 5th, 1975, while hiking through the woods, three teenage boys found human skeletal remains along the Rocky River in Strongsville, Ohio. The location is within an area that's currently known as the Cleveland Metro Parks Millstream Run Reservation. No physical evidence was found at the scene. An autopsy revealed that the bones were those of a white female in her late teens or early 20s who died of a gunshot wound to the head. Her death was ruled a homicide. For 43 years, the victim remained unidentified. In March of 2017, Cleveland Metro Parks detectives began working with the Cuyahoga County Medical Examiner's Office and the Akron Police Department to investigate a potential lead. The measures include exhuming the victim's body for DNA testing. Now, as a result of present-day scientific methods and technology, the victim is identified as Linda Pagano. Our agency is responsible for the homicide investigation. We're committed to pursuing any leads in this case, and if possible, bringing Linda's killer to justice. Anyone with information is urged to contact Cleveland Metro Parks Ranger Department. Thank you, Lieutenant. Um, I think we've summarized in five minutes a lot of hours of hours of hard work, and I would be very remiss if I didn't acknowledge other people on the stage at the far end. Beside Lieutenant Silvis is Angie Fisher, who is uh, our uh, sort of missing persons uh, per, uh, liaison within the office itself. And red right here is Tanisha Knighton, who was in the Sheriff's Department as a liaison for missing persons as well. Both were very, very helpful in this case, uh, tracking down leads uh, once we had the tentative identification. Right beside me is Dr. Kent Caserta. Before we reverted to DNA, we needed, uh, or we tried to do a dental comparison, and that was Dr. Caserta's contribution to our uh, investigation. And uh, 
unfortunately, he was able to say he couldn't rule Linda out, but he also could not rule her in. Uh, beside Dr. McKnighton is uh, Dr. Tim Matney, who was helpful from the University of Akron, who brought technology that enabled us to find the location where Linda was buried uh, and helpful to you know, get the right person over the course of time. Unfortunately, some of these graves become very much more challenging to identify where people were actually laid to rest. And beside Dr. Tim is uh, Mike Pagano, Linda's uh, brother, who asked me to convey his thanks to everybody on the stage and many, many other people who contributed to this effort. I'd be very remiss and I don't want to overlook anybody, so I'll ask you to bear with me uh, to mention several people who helped us. Dr. Linda Spurlock, who uh, is our consultant forensic anthropologist from Kent State University, the cemeteries division of the city of Cleveland, who were very helpful in identifying uh, where Linda's remains had been interred, the Cuyahoga County Sheriff's Department, as I mentioned, uh, Dr. McKnight and others, the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, the University of North Texas, where the DNA testing was actually conducted. And uh, I'd also like to mention, you know, there were past staff in this office uh, when it was the coroner's office who conducted the original investigation, one of whom was my teacher, uh, Dr. Charles Hirsch. He was the chief medical examiner subsequent to his tenure as a Cuyahoga County deputy coroner, and he trained me in New York City, so I feel like we've come full circle in bringing this case to closure on that piece. Uh, I would also like to say on behalf of everybody who didn't get a chance to speak and everybody who contributed to pass on our sincerest condolences to the Pagano family. I think, you know, losing somebody is terrible in its own right, and to have to wait 44 years for this resolution is certainly, you know, a very sad and trying thing, I'm sure. So uh, certainly, you know, keep you and Linda and everybody else in our prayers. Um, we'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. So she, she was reported missing in when, 1974? I believe it was September of 1974, uh, around Labor Day weekend. Okay. And so, I know it was a long time ago, but do you know how uh, might have missed connections a, a missing person's report and then this after discovery of the body that they were never linked. I certainly can, uh, you know, have the police comment on that too, but I think, you know, some of the issue at that time was just uh, that when these blast notifications were sent out about skeletal remains, that connection wasn't made. Uh, obviously, you know, nobody here on the stage was there 44 years ago, so I don't know if it was possibly that the skeleton was felt to be a little bit older than Linda initially, or that, uh, you know, information just didn't get to the right spot. But uh, I, I do think that's a big question. One of the things I would like to say, though, is that, you know, we never give up on trying to identify these folks. And I think as computer networks and things like the name a system have become available, we have been able to identify a lot of these missing people. Anything to add? I don't want to speak for everybody. Uh, we're not sure. Um. Can I ask a minute closing? Um, I'm just curious, after such a long time, are, are you still hopeful that, that you could get to the bottom of uh, who was responsible for the death? Yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't get a chance to call you back yesterday. That's Stephanie. Okay. Uh, and I think that the, the first step here with this investigation is to, to positively identify the victim as Linda. So, uh, of course, I would be hopeful, and I think that it's a possibility that, that we could identify a suspect. And can you talk about, I know you met with uh, Sergeant Jessica from the Akron Police Department yesterday, but what other steps is, is your department going to be taking to now to, to try to, to figure out who took her? The first thing to keep in mind, of course, is I only learned of her identity uh, a few days before everyone else in the room. So it's very early on for us. Uh, and of course, because it's an active investigation, I'm not at liberty to discuss specific details or uh, 
um, investigative techniques. But I will say that the first step that, that I believe we're going to take is to re-interview people, uh, those, those people that are still around from this time. And the uh, first step will be conducting interviews, but I won't speak about any further steps right now. Are there any interviews in the case of potential suspects? I know, uh, I think I heard that she was reporting this at the time of her stepfather. Yes. Is there any, that I'm sure the stepfather's still around, but maybe was a potential suspect in it? Uh, I, I, can't, I can't speak on behalf of the Akron Police investigation at the time, and of course it being so long ago, but, uh, but, but uh, yes, the, the stepfather has passed away quite some time ago. Um, I think it would be safe to say that he was a person of interest at some time, not a suspect, uh, but one of the last people to see her. We believe we know who that person was. They were indigent, buried. Uh, and you're right, we did initially find the wrong person. Um, the map that we had of the cemetery and working with the cemetery officials was just very old. Uh, and unfortunately, we didn't find Linda the first time out. Uh, I think what Remains we did recover there were of another individual who actually was very helpful in terms of giving us a sense where people were buried. And that's really where Dr. Matney was very helpful with the ground penetrating radar to come in and be able to say, if we know who this is in this location, then this is where we should go and look for Linda. So initially we did uh, not find Linda, but subsequently we did. Yes, uh, and you know, in large measure, a lot of those graves are unmarked. So we can only do the best we can in terms of estimating where we were on the first attempt. Was her uh, grave unmarked? Yes, it was at the time. Um, for the Akron folks, um, what leads did you have at the time um, after she? Because you didn't begin investigating, obviously, until she was reported missing, correct? Correct, yes, she was initially reported missing person by her stepfather. And so it was investigated as a missing person's case. And how long had she been missing by the time he reported it? I don't know, it was a day. So it was a stepfather reported her missing? Yes. And she lived uh, with the stepfather and other siblings? I know she was a stepfather, I don't know the whole uh, living arrangement. I, I can answer that. Let's see, can we have the mic, sir? Yeah, we, yeah. Gotta, we can't hear it. Yeah, we can't hear it. Yeah, if we talk over there, we can't hear it. Thank you, sir. Yeah, Linda was staying with my stepdad for the summer. Uh, she, uh, she was going to summer school so she could graduate on, because uh, she'd flunked one one year of school, so she wanted to graduate on the year she was supposed to, and he helped her get a car and stuff, and uh, and uh, he was kind of lonely after they divorced and stuff, so she felt sorry for him, and she went and stayed there. It was just supposed to be for the summer, and she was going to come back home and uh, finish school. Okay, and where was home? Home was in Springfield Township. Okay. And where did you go to high school? Springfield High School. So, as far as you know, she, she your stepfather too? Or? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. They got along fine? Or? Yes. Yeah. They got along better than me and my older sister did with him. So, that, that was kind of his favorite. Uh, okay. Do you know what they argued about? Uh, I was told it was, uh, she went to a concert and got home late. Yeah. Usual. I, I'm not sure if that's the truth or not, that, that's just what I was told. So, now that you're, Linda's been identified. Why don't we uh, do save questions for maybe just one-on-one uh, -on -one afterwards? Okay. It's an open investigation, I don't want to well, put Mike in an awkward position. Yeah, if she doesn't want her being identified, that's all. Sure. We're good. 
I, I didn't hear you. How do you feel? I mean, how when you got the news that she'd been identified, how did it make you feel? Uh, what were you thinking? Wow, I thought I was in a dream. I thought I'd never, never hear this. <laughs> and I thought this day would never come. I figured I'd die wondering, you know. Uh, I'm, I'm amazed that all this came to light like it did. All right, at this time, we're gonna- We still, we still need his name. We 